share any inspirations from your childhood that maybe made you want to go into storytelling? I started uh, following that passion in high school. I did theater. I did photography. I did a public access show. Um, It was called the Hot Girl Variety Show. (laughs) And uh, we got picked up by the local Fox News channel. They called us like the local Wayne and Garth. We got hate mail. We got fan mail. I thought, though, the hate mail is like, we're doing something right here. People like care enough to yeah. write us about what they hated. You it know was what like I mean? pre-internet <laughs> YouTube comments. It actually was That was a lot of effort to be a hater. Yes. I, that's why that I was like, hmm, there's, there's something it. to this, you yeah. know. But it was also then when I realized that life is better with a press pass. Because there mm-hmm. was like a local festival with music. We got to go behind um, or backstage and talk to Michelle Branch who was a singer at the time, and it was like, okay, I can get used to this, like, media pass thing. So I, when I first went to film school, I wanted to be a director. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people feel that way. Yes. Uh, But as I progressed in doing it, I thought, okay, well, I found if I wanted to be a director, I had to know what stories I wanted to tell. So then I started writing, Mm -hmm. and I actually fell more in love with writing than directing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I don't want to be a director anymore. I want to be a writer. And then uh, through doing that, it says, okay, well, if I want to be a writer, I actually kind of need to know how to produce stuff because I need to get my writing produced. Uh So then I started producing, and I was like, okay, I really like this too. Um, To be honest, one of the things that I wished I would have learned that I didn't is more of like contracts and and some of the business behind it there's such a learning curve when you get out of school of like Mm -hmm. well how much should I charge for my services and and how do I negotiate this and that and the other and that's so important yeah that's something I don't think a lot of people as when you want to be a filmmaker, you you're just, just want to do the creative. The creative. Yeah, yeah, creativity. And then when you get to L.A. and you're in the film world, you realize, like, wow, this is a full-blown business. Just yes. like every other type of business, there is so much more involved than just the artistic aspect. You made the transition. You were originally from Wisconsin. You went to college in Arizona. You are now out in L.A. at USC. What you graduate, what is your first job in LA? Yeah, I was a production assistant okay. on a music video. Okay. Yeah. And I went above and beyond my role. And when they did their second music video, I was the producer. Mm-hmm. So I went from PA to producer very quickly. Yeah, that is very quickly it was different than most people. And very lucky. But yeah. I think it was, again, the fact that I had the, made the connections with them yeah. and just excelled and showed them that I knew what I was doing. So, you know, whenever you have an opportunity, every opportunity to impress is important because they'll, they'll hire you back and pay you next time. (laughs) That's neat that you had an internship in development and still to this day you're doing development. That's really neat that it's stuck so close for all these years. I think a lot of people watching, they may know some of the main jobs like director, camera person, editor, but we may not know a lot about development. Can you kind of break that down for us, what all that job requires? Yeah, definitely. So development is essentially developing properties and ideas. And so I come up with new TV show ideas ideas specifically and I create pitch materials to showcase the networks what those ideas are so a sizzle reel is always very important because it's a visual medium they Mm want to know visually what the idea is Mm -hmm. and then I also do a treatment uh, which is a written presentation that could go more in depth to the idea sample stories or episode act breakdowns things like that Um, so the pitch materials are really vital in communicating the idea that I've come up with Um, they're not always my ideas I take outside pitches and work with outside producers to further develop their ideas Mm -hmm. and you know the exchanging of creative ideas really gets me going and so and I just love talking to people so it really um, is actually one of my favorite parts of my job I've pitched hundreds of projects and I've um, I've EP'd you know uh, two series um, and five pilots in the last two years and so, yeah, you just have to have thick skin and not take yes. it personally. And you have to be resilient. Yes, you do. Uh, you definitely do. It's what hole they have in their schedule and how much money they have and, you know, what they're expecting at that time. And so it's not personal to you or your idea. 
you are the VP of Development and Acquisition at Reed Ghosh Television. Can you please tell me and the viewers more about your job and what you do specifically there? Yeah, um, so Reed Ghosh Television is uh, best known as an international distribution company. Okay. So they um, their specialty is distributing TV shows all around the world. Mm -hmm. um, some of their most popular titles that they distribute is The Dog Whisperer mm -hmm. with Caesar Milan, um, My Strange Addiction, yes. Operation <laughs> Repo, um, Homicide Hunter. We have a lot of crime, true crime titles. Um, speci uh, we specialize in non uh, scripted. Uh -huh. um, factual entertainment. Part of my job is in development is to create new TV show ideas mm -hmm. um, with the um, the aim to retain the international rights. Um, I also do acquisitions which oh. means that I acquire finished content okay. um, from other producers or um, or networks. We also do co-productions uh, meaning we put money into new productions in order to retain and sell those international rights. Um, so it's a global industry. Yeah. From the college I went to, they were always pushing on us, you need to be ready to work in a global market. You need to be ready to work in... That was always... I mean, I'm from Alabama. That's not exactly what everybody's talking about. Oh, have a career in a global market. That was something that I was not aware of until right. I started traveling how much power... Uh, American or at least North American entertainment has on the rest of the world. Yes, that's very true. Do you have any other projects that you work on? Yeah, so I actually have written two books under the pen name J.P. Kaywood. If you've noticed, they're doing a lot of reboots of brands that we already know or they're um, basing it on underlying IP, you know, comic books or um, books or, you know, just something that is already a known entity. Mm -hmm. So um, my thought was to create books with the idea of hopefully someday making them into TV or film. One of my books is called Love from Mars. Okay. And it's a, actually a science fiction romance. Uh -huh. um, it's about the first six people who are chosen to colonize Mars. Yes. Naturally, they're chosen through a reality competition elimination that show. That sounds about right. If Some, it's coming yeah. from America, that's how we choose things nowadays. Yeah, exactly. It's something I kind of know a little bit about. What I do find interesting about like reality TV or you know factual entertainment, whatever you want to call it, it's kind of a window into other people's lives. Yes. Well, that's why I love it so much. I've told my friends, anybody that knows me knows I love reality TV because people say, oh yeah, they're actors. And I'm like, yeah, but these are real people putting themselves out there. And yes. it fascinates me what people are willing to share. <laughs> yeah, but I think the fact that they are willing to share builds a little tolerance because yeah. you might say, oh, that person's weird. But mm -hmm. then you get to like look into their lives and through these shows and say, oh, actually they're quite relatable or, oh, I kind of understand why they're that way. Or, you know, I think it's a it, it does build some tolerance hopefully in life. Yeah. But um, I hate it sometimes in Hollywood when people want to pigeonhole you mm -hmm. where you're like, oh, you've done reality TV. That's all you can do. I like to do all different kinds of stories and all different kinds of, you know, scripted versus non and you know it's good to um to kind of be able to dabble in a little bit of everything creatively i think a lot of people don't realize that about having a career in the film world they probably move out here thinking i'm going to do this i'm going to move to california and i'm going to become a director and then you get out here and you realize whoa there are so many opportunities so many different varieties of things and you just never know where your interest is going to fall i definitely realize that coming out here like I started out here I was in art department I didn't even know what art department was but you just uh you get started you see what happens yeah the journey is the fun part all right thank you so much Julie for being a part of the show I hope everyone has enjoyed the interview please subscribe below and check out all my other videos thanks